This is an action game like you've never seen before. The team here at Radical are open world specialists. We, we went a lot deeper in story than most games ever even consider going. You know. We do not allow any restraints from 3D to hinder any creativity in this room. We've been doing this kind of game. Scarface, Hulk, Simpsons Hit and Run. These are all open world games, so we're real specialists in this area. think you were put here for a reason. Black Watch is a special forces branch of the US military. They're top secret, they're beyond top secret. They're set up specifically to deal with biological outbreaks. These are the guys that will go in, wipe out entire families, neighborhoods, buildings, and not bat an eye on it. They are completely convinced that what they are doing is right, and that they're the last line of defense against what they're fighting. A viral outbreak starts in New York and various neighborhoods of the city become no-go zones and basically they're brought in to clean up the mess. And the poor Marines have no idea what's going on, but the Black Watcher are sinister, effective, they know exactly what the virus does um, and they're on the lookout for both the player character and other things infected with the virus. The Black Watch are constantly developing weapons through the story of the game to counter the player's abilities in prototype. So they're not just a static force, they're not just a snapshot at the start of the game, which uh, they roll more and more guys in through the game. Once they start realizing and analyzing what the player can do, they deploy new technologies to the field. They'll hunker down, they'll get heavier weapons on you, they won't run. They're used to things like this, they've seen it before. The specialist is Black Watch is best. Uh, we wanted a human foe that Alex could face directly and have a chance of losing. Uh, we call him the uh, right man for the wrong job, the, the ultimate bad guy that comes out in the field when Alex has uh, revealed himself too much. He's dealt with things like Alex before. What makes someone want to become a Black Watch soldier? Uh, are they just brutal killers? Are they uh, humanitarians? Do I shoot the innocent? because I'm crazy or do I shoot the innocent to protect them because the virus is going to be worse? So we start there of what is the mindset behind these soldiers who are Black Watch? What does it take to become a Black Watch soldier? They're a pretty terrifying bunch of people, not just to the player, but also to the inhabitants of New York. Germany in 1932, you know, when they set up their uniforms, they, none of it was an accident. They set it up to look intimidating. And, and a force to be reckoned with. And we did that with Black Watch, uh, that we started with their helmets, their clothes. These guys don't run. These guys stand their ground, and they're not afraid of a fight. That helps with what are they wearing? What do they look like? And Kev here could probably show you a couple examples of what I'm talking about. The, the idea behind these guys is they have to look scary. So what I did was just to make them a little bit more scary, I remove the eyes, remove the face, so you don't have that sort of connection to the, to, the, to the more sort of human aspects. So you can't ever see the face, so you get right away the, the feeling that you cannot reason with these people, that they're almost subhuman, um, cold, ruthless. You know, they, they don't have any qualms about taking extreme action to, uh, to deal with the problem at hand. And I think they represent in our game themes of government overreaching its power in a, in a state of crisis. I mean, clearly that's a theme in our game, and the player is going to be reacting to that and seeing kind of the extreme representation if it happened on U.S. soil. There's the old saying, you know, f fight not with monsters lest you become a monster. You have to become your enemy to win. Biological weapons are unforgiving. They don't care about families. They don't care about uh, loved ones, men, women, children, interrelationships. It just spreads. That's all it does. Prototype is our new action-adventure game. It's a free-roaming, open-world game, very much in the M for Mature space. The centre of the game is about how these powers were acquired, what they are, and what that means for the larger picture in New York at stake, because there's more going on in New York than just Alex Mercer being on the loose. There's a viral outbreak in New York. The government quarantined Manhattan. They secure the entire thing and they start locking it down and looking for trouble spots and trying to stamp them out. But the virus is more than just a regular virus. There appears to be a pattern to what it's doing. 
maybe even an intelligence that's guiding it. There's more to this than just a viral outbreak. So what you don't get in a normal video game is you don't get that sense of sustained destruction, effect, debris, smoke, and stuff which clouds and obscures the environment after something like a tank shell hits a building or after a Hellfire missile blows out the front of a store. And that's something which we want to have it introduce as a gameplay element and really use it to build up that sense of intensity, that sense of chaos which spreads out from any one of these kind of combat interactions. So people are confused, people are distracted, people can't see what's going on inside these destruction clouds. And then the player can switch on his enhanced senses and move through this cloud and use it to his advantage. Maybe shape-shifting unless he's obscured very quickly, using it to consume someone, come out of the cloud and then be treated as a squad mate for a military unit perhaps. And uh, use it really as something which adds a new dimension to the gameplay once, once combat erupts it becomes much more chaotic. He can consume any living creature. He acquires its DNA, its memories, its skills and can inherit powers that it might have too. So, first of all he has to kill the target, and then has to very quickly break down its biological composition and absorb it into his body. Consumptions are some of the most dramatic moves we have in the game. They're, they're very, very spectacular kills of the enemies. Close-up struggles, or just over-the-top kind of grapples. Very, very visceral ways to take down your opponents, and then ultimately get everything that we have. So, once Alex has a consume, like I said, he has his, he has his memories, skills, abilities. So. That's how we dig into the conspiracy in the game. The player isn't going through as a detective doing pixel hunting. The player literally working his way to the heart of this conspiracy through finding conspirators, consuming them, gaining their knowledge, and then using that to piece together what has happened. So that's what a web of intrigue target is. Many of them are real people who know something about the conspiracy, who connect with other people in the conspiracy, who allow you to spread out your inter levels of interconnection and further dig deeply into the, the events that have transpired to to bring us to where we are at the start of this game. We've been talking about Prototype, that's out on the Xbox 360, PS3 and PC sometime in 08. Right off the bat, I could tell that the art, the concept art was fantastic. This was something that they had worked on for a long time. It was their, their secret baby, and they knew it would be a fantastic game. And, and sure enough, I mean, when I started seeing the cutscenes that they had, it just blew me away. We didn't have to do a ton of work to make this work as a comic book because, you know, it has a lot of the same things comic books feature. Carnage and, and, and uh, destruction. Um, a hero that's an anti-hero slash not misunderstood hero slash conspiracy theories. It's a whole world of an idea, and uh, we're even uh, even what we're doing, we're still covering just a tiny bit of it. You don't really know much about him. He's really mysterious, but he's still a hero, and like it's uh, it's violent too. I really like violence in comics, and this is actually a really violent book. It's it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of splatter and action. Wildstorm. Uh, publishes uh, a line of comics under DC Comics. We have a number of different artists here, uh, all of whom I've handpicked and hired over the years, and all of them have uh, different skills. And so some of them work on just straightforward comic books, others do concept art for video games, um, but everyone has the same passion for comic books and drawing and art. It's an awesome work environment, and I think anyone that's worked here can tell you like it's it's one of a kind. I love zombies, I love monsters, ghouls, all that all that crazy stuff. And I was just inspired just by the art that I've already seen for the game. But I was very uh, surprised at what I saw that's already been done, that's already been established for this game. It really uh, inspired me, just just some of the new stuff that they've created. The, the craziness of some of their characters, you know, just nasty, uh, you, know, out of, you know, out of like your worst nightmare. And um, I just, you know, went with it, just had fun with it. All right, what I'm working on currently is a page from the prototype comic where you basically see a human that's been infected with the virus and they're now transforming into this creature. In my story, I try to kind of tie into the real world while portraying it very kind of cinematically, I hope. Alex Mercer is the main character. He has a really cool look and it's very, very contemporary. And then in the, in the art I saw, he's like running up the side of the buildings and he's got these gigantic claws out and there's thousands of uh, soldiers after him, and it's just like, wow, they're really shooting, you know, for the sky in this. And I like the idea of the action investigation. You know, he's, he's, Alex is digging in, trying to find out who he is and where he came from, and along the way we're playing this 
insanely visual, explosive game, and it's sort of like Columbo with the A-bomb going off, you know? It's, it's, it's crazy, it's over the top, and it's the way I like video games. I, I you know, I, I, my life is exciting, but I need something more exciting in video games, and, uh, and Prototype definitely offers that.